In this video, I'll be discussing creating architectural interior uh, still frame renders using 3D Studio Max uh, and Mental Ray. We'll walk through setting up the direct and indirect illumination uh, on this model using uh, a white material to customize and configure uh, the, the color of the light and the values of the lighting that we're, we're looking for before switching over uh, and applying the materials and render the, uh, the completed version. Now since I will be working with indirect illumination, photometric lights, IES profiles, uh, things like that, the scale of this scene is critical. Um, it's very important when you're working with indirect illumination and photometric lights and IES profiles to make sure that your scene is scaled to a realistic uh, real world value. For example, if I drag out a tape, uh, measure, tape measure here in the uh, scene just to go to the ceiling, uh, you can see that I'm about 129 inches uh, from the floor to the ceiling and from the uh, longest width across the room about 263 inches uh, wide from interior wall to interior wall at the widest point. Now if this wasn't scaled properly um, say this room was uh, you know a thousand foot wide and 500 feet tall uh, and I tried to light it with a 60 watt light bulb that's really not going to give you the results that you would uh, if you wanted a if you used a, a more real world scaled model so when creating the model uh, to make sure that I'm within scale I just went through and set up my units um, I use inches or feet uh, and then make sure that the system unit is set accordingly so I'm using inches for the system unit and I'm also displaying uh, inches. If you're using metric, you would use metric here. Um, whatever uh, is comfortable for you to use, just make sure that it's a, a realistically scaled model. Okay, so let me just switch back to my camera view here. And as I said, I will be using mental ray uh, for this particular scene, so I'm just going to come down and switch uh, the assigned renderer here. I'm going to switch from the scanline render over to mental ray and we will be using indirect illumination in this scene. Now there's really two main options for indirect illumination. If you switch over to the indirect illumination tab you'll see you have final gather which is enabled by default uh, in 3ds max 2009 and 2010 and you also have global illumination. Uh, global illumination is a photon based whereas uh, final gather is more of a distance based uh, maybe like an irradiance uh, type solution you could use these separately or you could use them together. Now in this particular video, uh, just to stay on topic, I'm not going to go in in-depth details of what all of these settings do. I have a separate video on that uh, for indirect illumination settings. Uh, so you may want to check that out prior to starting this uh, because I'm just going to quickly go through and configure the settings here uh, for this particular scene, of course, I'll explain why I'm doing that, but again, some of the settings here I won't use, uh, and so I won't explain in detail in this particular video. Before jumping in and just taking off with the lighting here, uh, one thing that I have found useful over the years uh, is to have a lot of reference images. Uh, these can come from Google, your own pictures that you take, etc. Uh, but I like to go through and whatever I'm working on have some reference images to go by. So I've compiled some photos here of interior scenes I'd like to look at. Uh, and these are, I've compiled these particular photos for various reasons. Uh, like in this example I wanted to show how uh, with the camera exposure in this particular photo you get this overbright uh, window area, but you also have this very soft uh, illumination coming into the to the room because there's no direct sunlight coming in. So just that skylight uh, is really given a can produce such a, a very soft uh, illumination effect to the room. In the next example, again, you can see the overbright window uh, because again the camera is the camera's exposure is set for the interior lighting, not for the exterior lighting of the scene. Um, also you'll notice a slight blue tint coming in from uh, the sky here. I frequently heard people say, uh, you know, I set up a daylight system and render this interior but I have all this blue light coming in. Uh, well that's a, a natural effect because you naturally the sky is blue on a clear day uh, and you get this blue light coming in 
uh, through your windows. Again, in the next example, uh, you can see that blue effect um, a little more clearly here. Uh, and some of these pictures may have been adjusted in Photoshop. I'm not sure, uh, but the the basics here are the same throughout each of the pictures here. Uh, you can s still see the blue light coming in. Um, in this in this particular example, uh, you can see how the soft illumination coming in from these large um, windows here. You lose some detail, uh, actually, here along this side, um, and it's there's no real hard uh, lighting in this scene. Everything is very soft and diffused. Again, another example of overblown, uh, overexposed areas here in the windows because the camera exposure is set for the interior lighting, not the exterior lighting. Uh, and again, you can see the blue light uh, coming in from the windows here. Uh, this particular one, the blue is a, another example of the blue light coming in from the windows and the uh, soft illumination. Again here the blue is rather strong and I think it's because the uh, exposure on the uh, the camera that was used here, uh, the Kelvin on that exposure was set for these light sources uh, because they're rather neutral. Uh, and chances are they would produce a more yellow effect if you had, say, an exposure of 6500. Uh, and so with a low Kelvin on the exposure, you would get uh, a stronger blue from the sky. And finally, I believe this is the last one. Uh, again, you can see the overblown area here at the window, the overblown light sources here, uh, overexposed, I should say, and the very soft illumination in the room. Uh, not a lot of detail here, but you can just kind of make out the details. Uh, you actually lose a lot here. You can see that there's no corner detail here, but uh, you kind of know what's going on. But the, the illumination is, indirect illumination in this room is, is very, uh, very soft. Okay, so with these examples fresh on our mind, uh, let's go through and set this scene up with some direct and indirect illumination. Now, as I said earlier, there's two methods of indirect illumination. We have final gather and global illumination. Uh, for this first part of the discussion, uh, I'm just going to use final gather only because to me, uh, in my opinion, that's the uh, easiest method to set up uh, with global illumination. And generally speaking, you're not going to be able to just, to just use global illumination by itself. You're going to have to combine global illumination with final gather. And so that's more settings that you're going to have to tune. Uh, so for the the easiest and the fastest setup, uh, you may want to stick with Final Gather. So I'm going to do that first. Uh, and then once that's set up, I'll go through and set up uh, the scene again using GI plus Final Gather. So let me just close that. And what I'll do, the first thing that I'll do is just go in and create a daylight system in the scene. So again, you can create a daylight system either by create uh, and lights uh, daylight system, or you can go to the uh, systems tab here and go to daylight. And it's going to ask you when you first click on it uh, if you want to use the exposure control, which I do. So I'm just going to click yes. And just drag out with the left mouse button this compass rose. Let go of the left mouse button, and it will ask you if you want to uh, use the mental ray physical sky as an environment map. Again, I'm going to say yes. And now I can just drag the height of the mental ray sun and sky. Okay, I'm just going to leave that alone for now. And the next thing that I need to create uh, would be some uh, light portals at these windows. And the light portals will just focus that, that skylight into the scene here uh, without the need for a, a very a high amount of final gather. So I will go to the uh, light sources here and just click on mineral ray sky portal. Now I could go and I could create one uh, for every window in this scene, uh, but you may not want to do that, especially if you're just going to use final gather, uh, because the more of these that you have in the scene, the slower it's going to take to render. Uh, the longer time it's going to take to render, I should say, uh, the slower it will be. So the fewer of these that you can use, the better off that you're going to be because these are area lights. So there's um, quite a bit of calculation that goes into play. So instead of creating one per window, what I'll do is, it, or one per pane of glass here, I'm just going to create one large um, light per set of windows. 
Now to kind of speed up my viewport here, I'm going to go in and turn off some of these layers. Um, I have everything set up on layers. I'm just going to disable the uh, or hide the furniture layer. That should speed things up a little bit here. So as you can see, I've created that uh, sky portal light, and it's just slightly larger than these window panes. Um, so next, I will just drag this over uh, as an instance copy. And once again, as an instance copy. I'm not making these an exact fit, as you can tell, just somewhat in the range uh, of the size of this, these windows. So now let me switch viewports here and go to a top view. And if you notice, uh, there's an arrow pointing which the direct showing you the direction of these light sources. So right now they're set up to push light towards the windows from inside the room, which obviously is incorrect. So I'm just going to switch over to uh, my selection box here, my selection filter, uh, and set it for lights and just grab all three of these. I'm just going to move them outside of the room, close to the windows like so. And since these are instances, uh, I'm going to change uh, this direction here. If I hit this flip light flux direction, now they're pointing into the room. And since it's instance copies, uh, all three of them change at the same time. So I have two more windows here on the back side of this model. So I'm just going to grab these two uh, light sources and drag them down as instance copies as well. Now obviously these need to be uh, reversed as well because when I move them into place you can see that they're pointing away from the building. But since it's an instance copy if I flip that then the these others are going to flip the wrong direction too. So what I'll do is just mirror these. Whoops. I'll just mirror these. Go to tools and mirror. And I'm just going to mirror on the x-axis. And so now they're pointing in the right direction even though they're still instance copies. So if I change the direction on these, uh, they're all still working as you'd expect now. Now on these portal lights, um, the default value is to use the existing skylight for its uh, brightness and color. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that as is since I have this skylight in the scene, which is the mental ray sky. So these portal lights are going to pick up their intensity and color from the mental ray sky. I will also just leave the shadow samples and all the settings at the default values at this point. Um, if I just switch back to a, uh, let's go to the camera view here. Really that's, that's it. That's it for the configuration of the uh, natural light in the scene. The only thing that I need to add now would be the, um, the man-made lights, which would be the photometric lights in the scene. But before I do that, I may want to just go ahead and configure uh, the indirect illumination and the lighting um, for this scene, run a quick test to see what I have. Now, when I make when I configure the lighting in my scenes and the indirect illumination, I generally prefer to set up the lighting and then use a kind of a neutral colored material on all the objects in the scene just to dial in the look of the lighting that I'm after. So I already have materials applied to uh, all of the objects in this scene. So to quickly uh, apply a material here, I'm going to use the override, uh, material override of Mental Ray, which is in the Processing tab, uh, and you see this option for Material Override. What that's going to do is replace all the materials in the scene at render time uh, with one material. Now it's not physically going to go in and change the materials on my objects, it's just a render time um, occurrence. So I'm going to enable that, open up my material editor, and I'm just going to add, you have to select what type of material you want to override with. So I'm going to put arc and design material, and just drag this over to the material editor as an instance copy. And now I'll go in and change the settings here. I don't want uh, a lot of uh, reflections going on here because I'm just setting up the lighting. So what I'm going to do is lower the reflectivity and enable this highlights in FG only mode so that I'm not having to calculate a bunch of ray traced uh, reflections. Uh, it'll render faster and I want uh, kind of a diffused uh, glossiness to this material. You can see as I decrease that um, get more of a diffused gloss. Something like so. And then for the color I'll just use a uh, let's just say 0.85 kind of a light color. Oops. 
0.85 kind of a light colored uh, neutral grayish white okay so now what will happen when I render this is that every object in this scene uh, will have this material applied to it at render time uh, the problem with that is if I render right now I, you notice that I have glass panes in here well those glass panes have a an arc and designed glass material on it well if they get this solid object naturally I'm not going to get any light in the scene so what I need to do is hide the glass so I'll go into my layers manager and here I have the glass panes actually on a, a separate layer that I can easily just uh, hide those. Okay, next I need to check the render size here. So I'm going to go to the common tab. Uh, it's set up for 800 by 533. I don't need that large of a render for testing phases, so I'm just going to change that to 400, maybe 420, just so it'll be a little bit larger to see uh, in the video here. Okay, so I'll just close this now and let's just give this a render and see what we have. Well, it doesn't look like much at this stage. Uh, the reason for that it's rather dark uh, is because of the default exposure settings. If I open up the exposure control settings, uh, you'll see that this EV value, the exposure value, uh, is rather high. And that's set for a daylight render, but for an exterior, for the outside of this, the, uh, the building here. So what I'll do is go to a preset uh, and just drop down and say uh, physically based uh, indoor daylight and you can see that drops down to 10 let me give that a render okay so now we have the overexposed windows we have uh, the illumination in the room you can see it better now uh, just by switching the exposure control now these values, uh, these presets that I use, uh, these are just very good starting points. Uh, they're not set in stone that this is what you have to use uh, for an exposure of this particular scene because just like if you had a camera and went into any number of rooms uh, of your house, uh, there's different lighting in each room. There's different sized windows, uh, there may be uh, different materials in the room that some absorb more light than others uh, so you you will have to go in and adjust this per scene uh, but these presets will get you close uh, to what you need so you can start out with those and then adjust as needed obviously the lower the EV value uh, the brighter the scene is going to be another comment that I frequently hear is that I don't want this over bright uh, overexposed area uh, it may not be that you don't want it, perhaps your client probably doesn't want it. Uh, if they're paying for architectural vis, uh, vis on a, uh, a beach house, then chances are they're going to want to see the beach out uh, outside these windows uh, instead of the accurate overblown look that you would get. Uh, so there are a couple of ways that you can handle that. Uh, one easy way and fast way, uh, if you're using these portal lights like I am here, is you can go, let me just close this right quick, uh, you can go to the uh, transparency setting here. Now what this does is has nothing to do with the amount of light uh, that these produce, uh, but if I change this down to something like so, uh, it's going to change the transparency, almost like a glass if you will, uh, of what you see behind that uh, portal light. So let me give this another render and so now you can see what's actually out there. It's kind of, think of it kind of like a little mini exposure, a localized exposure. Uh, so you can decrease that uh, and maybe uh, 8.5. I'm not going to go up too much uh, or darken this too much because uh, at this point I don't know what my textures uh, will look like. The textures are a little bit darker, These, especially these couches. Uh, if I show you the completed render. Uh, so they're that darker texture will absorb more light in the scene uh, so the exposure setting may be fine as it is I'm not going to tune it for this white texture anyway I'm just going to uh, see what the indirect illumin illumination looks like at this point now you also notice that I haven't changed any of the settings here I'm still using the default settings uh, so again this is just a preliminary uh, example of what the scene will look like and it's a fast rendering uh, preview so once I'm happy with the amount of light in the scene then I can start uh, configuring the final gather to increase the details and to uh, 
fix some of these areas where you see there's the shadows look kind of weird and things like that. So the daylighting looks okay. The next step for me would be to go ahead and put the man-made lights in. So what I'll do is go to my top viewport and these are the light sources so I'm just going to uh, put uh, photometric area lights under these. So I'm just going to create and in the light section I'm going to create a free light and just kind of move this uh, center it of this object here which is the light fixture. Now I will be using IES profiles on these lights just for the added realism so what I'll do is change uh, the light distribution type to photometric web and I'll just create uh, go pick a photometric file here okay here I have several photometric IES files I'm just going to pick the first one here because I kinda of like the the profile of it uh, if you're if you have specific lights uh, models that you've created based on real-world light and then I just need to move them into place so and again uh, more copies of this so I'll just drag a selection around these three shift drag an instance copy again like so and I have two more light fixtures here uh, behind this television instance copies these I'll need to change the height on because uh, these light fixtures are a little bit higher in the room uh, or lower I'm sorry than the uh, ones in the ceiling so once I get these in place I'll switch to a different viewport and move these down. Just like so. Okay, so let me switch back to my camera view here. And we may want to give this a preview render now. Okay, those look about right. Now, if you notice the warm color here that's coming from that Kelvin value of 3000 um, and if you remember from the previous discussion on uh, the look of how you get this blue the strong blue uh, from the light source and I said that the the exposure was probably balanced for uh, these interior lights what I mean by that is if I go into my exposure control and instead of using 6500 Kelvin, if I set that for 3000, which is the Kelvin value of these lights, uh, these lights will become neutral, uh, white color. You'll see that it's not changing the value of the light, it's just changing the, the tone of the exposure. But you'll also see that this blue uh, from the sky becomes stronger. So as you can see, the lights now produce a white, uh, neutral color light, but we have that strong uh, blue we have a smurf room now if you will um, because of that change in the exposure control so I'm going to set that back to um, something that I use on my own camera which I have a preset for daylight which is uh, 5400 and what that's going to do is give me that warm color from the light and then a, a, just a little bit stronger blue than 6500 the default value would give okay that looks good uh, now if you remember from some of the other examples again going back to these uh, this very soft diffuse light that we have when there's no direct light if you notice there's, the sunlight's not shining directly into this room it's basically on top of the room uh, so I want to get rid of some of these over bright areas and create a more soft uh, illumination effect uh, to do that it really has nothing can, to do with the lights in the scene I'm just going to change my exposure again I'm going to dial down this burn value uh, to something like 0.025 instead of 0.25 and as you can see that really softened up those highlights uh, don't have as many burnt areas uh, I may want to increase that to let's say 0.05 just to brighten up some of these highlights 
Okay, so really I'm I'm fairly happy with what I have here. I think now I'm ready to go in and start changing the final gather settings. Um, you also notice I have some grain uh, in here that's coming from these lights that are outside these area lights, the portal lights. Um, we'll adjust that to dial that out and also uh, increasing the image precision will uh, tighten up some of these edges. So I'm going to increase this to 1 in 16. Now in uh, 3ds Max 2010 and Design 2010, you have the option here in the in the frame buffer to increase the glossy reflections, the shadow precision, uh, glossy refraction. So if I wanted to, I could actually globally increase uh, the the uh, area shadow sampling on these light sources from here without actually going in and changing. Uh, the settings on this light source. So what I'll do is just increase this to uh, let's say 4x and so that's just going to multiply whatever that value is. I think uh, it's 16 by default and that will reduce some of the grain here. It's also going to increase the render time because it's more calculations that it has to do. Uh, so I may want to just dial that back to 2 for now. Um, and give that a try. Uh, but next I want to look at the indirect illumination settings. So let's look up final gather here. Uh, you can see that I'm not using any bounces so really uh, this is kind of a diffuse light and we're getting one bounce of light uh, from the final gather at this point. Uh, for a good interior you're going to want to use I think it's between four and six and in fact if you click on this diffuse bounces if you just drag the mouse over uh, you'll get this tool tip and it says a value of four to seven is required for accurate indoor uh, scene so I'm just going to set this to five and also if you notice this trace depth um, that limits the number of bounces if you will uh, for final gather. The reflection, the default is two, so it's only going to do two reflections, so I'm going to increase that to five. And for the uh, the setting here, I'm going to go in and change this to, let's use medium, and let's just uh, increase the render size here slightly, so that we can get a better view of what's going on, and I'll give this a render now. And in the completed render, as you can see, uh, it looks okay. I do have some areas, you can see kind of a splotchy effect here uh, on the backs of these pillows and on the backs of this uh, sofa over here. Uh, there are just a couple of areas that uh, could use some higher FG settings. Final photos that I showed you, uh, you actually lost some detail uh, in areas, especially at the ceiling. So that softness is actually good uh, for architectural interiors. If you want more detail, then an easy way to get that is to use the uh, ambient occlusion feature on the materials. And what I'll do is just come down, and this is the that uh, global material that I'm using in this material override. I'll just scroll down to the uh, special effects rollout and enable ambient occlusion. Uh, again, I'm just going to leave the settings at default because I'm just trying to show you uh, what you can get with just the, using minimal changes to your settings here. Uh, I'll just leave that as it is. And let me load this in the RAM player, this existing render. Move this off to the side. Now what I did while ago was I actually calculated that final gather map and I saved it to a uh, file here. And so now when I go back and render, I'm just going to have it read from the points rather than calculate that final gather pass again. Because any time that you have to calculate the final gather, um, and especially on a medium, high, or or even higher settings, uh, it can take a while to calculate. This one took about 10 minutes uh, to calculate this pass with using the number of uh, bounces that we have which is five uh, so it's quite a bit of calculations going on so to go in let me just show you real quickly what I did uh, I'll just call this uh, temp or test and let me just go back and change this to draft preset so this will go pretty quick and all I did was go and tell it to generate final gather map file and it'll come through and it'll start calculating um, in a second and then it will start uh, calculating that indirect illumination
And while that's doing that, it's actually writing to this file. Okay, so then once it's complete, um, I will tell it to, you have the options here under what to do with this final gather map. You can turn it off and it's not going to use the map, it's just going to calculate every time. I can tell it to incrementally add final gather points to this existing map. So if I wanted to change some of the settings, um, it would add those changes to this map that I just calculated. Or if I tell it to read the final gather points only, then it's not going to calculate anything and it's just going to read the data that's already saved in this file. So when I go to render, now it just goes directly to rendering instead of having to calculate that final gather pass. Let me just cancel this. And I'm just going to load up the, uh, the other file that I made while ago, which is the exact same as this file. And so what I'll do is that now that we have that ambient occlusion effect added to this shader, I'll go ahead and render this. Let me set this back to medium just so I don't get confused later. It's not going to calculate anything. It's just reading from a file. Uh, but I just, so that I don't make a mistake later on, I'm going to set that back to medium. And go ahead and render this. Okay, that render is complete. So what I'll do is add this into the other channel of the RAM player and we can do some comparisons here. Uh, you can see that the left side has the ambient occlusion effect. And as I drag this around, you can see that that's adding the details uh, in the scene, especially like in the corners uh, and these areas uh, along here where it's hard for Final Gather to add a lot of detail in uh, without using very high settings. So that's kind of a way that you can uh, add some details and use lower Final Gather settings uh, and still have those shadow details that you want to bring out uh, a lot of the, the curvatures of the models that you create while still maintaining fairly quick render times uh, because you get to use that medium or low quality uh, final gather solutions. Now the only downside to that is as you can see it creates kind of a uniform shadow appearance uh, but your clients may not, you'll probably notice that, but your clients may not, it just depends on how savvy they are uh, with um, final with uh, indirect illumination and things like that, how it's supposed to look and for example in the scene that the final completed scene here you can tell that I used ambient occlusion by seeing this uh, uniform shadow here along this edge where the two walls meet so if you if you're looking real hard and you're studying this you'll notice uh, you'll see these ambient occlusion uh, items like that they'll just scream at you but uh, in an, if this was an animated scene or if I weren't if I wasn't uh, terribly familiar with things like this uh, such as maybe some of your clients that uh, hire you to create architectural interior renderings uh, you probably wouldn't pay much attention to that again especially if it's animated you're walking around the scene uh, this isn't really gonna stick out like it does in a still frame okay now one trick let me just close this one trick that you can do here is even though I have this final gather solution calculated for uh, this white room if you will I could actually just go in and turn that uh, this material override option off and render it with my textures uh, it would keep some of the indirect illumination data uh, and just apply my textures textures to this scene perhaps that a reason that you'd want to do that is if you have a client that does not want any uh, strong color bleed in a scene um, if naturally the indirect illumination will be uh, incorrect for this scene let me just go ahead and render this so as you can see it completed the render um, and it's applied the materials now that are in the scene but of course that indirect illumination solution is incorrect because it's all based on that white color and it's hard to control the color of your textures as you can see from the the comparison render here the original uh, that the, the sofa texture is kind of a, a brown whereas here you get that strong bluish uh, hue added to it and it's because it's it's again is based on that white material that we used or that kind of white material that we used uh, for the indirect illumination calculation why would you want to do something like this uh, if you're in a pinch for time uh, you might be able to get by with using this again it just depends on your client uh, sometimes it can take a little bit longer to calculate the final gather uh, when you use all of these glossy materials in the scene than 
that uh, that white material that I used previously for the final gather calculation. So it can save a little bit of time, but of course it's uh, not an accurate uh, result for the materials that I used in this scene. Uh, but it, it again, it may be able to get you out of a, a bind if you're in a pinch for time. Uh, it just depends on your client. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up for the final render now. Uh, what I want to do first is go in and delete uh, this map that we're using here, this final gather map. I'm just going to uh, click delete. And let's go in and change the sun position here because I kind of want the sun coming in this front window. So what I'm going to do is just put this in manual position or manual mode so I can just drag it and move it where I want. And let me just go into my camera viewport here and I'm going to turn on uh, hardware shading and enable shadows and instead of using default lights I want to use the scene lights and what that's going to do is kind of show me uh, where the lights are and what kind of position the Sun is going to play in this role so what I want to do is just move this over just a little That looks okay. And that's all right. So let's go back to the camera view here. What I'd like to do is disconnect this uh, this the sunlight uh, from the mental ray sky because I want to specify my own color for this. And since it's the sun is rather low, I want to give it a more warm color. So I'm going to increase uh, this red blue tint to the positive scale. Remember, higher values uh, turn towards more the red side of uh, light versus uh, negative values will make the light blue. So I'm going to increase that to 0.3 and maybe decrease the saturation just a little bit. So since I've moved the sun around to the room, I just want to check my exposure again. So what I'll do is go in to my indirect illumination settings here and I want to turn off final gather uh, just so that I can check the brightness of the of the scene here uh, the direct light contribution so if I render this you're going to see the direct light uh, in the scene here okay and that looks pretty good again that's just a direct illumination there's no indirect illumination yet so the only thing that I think I would like to do <clears throat> excuse me is to maybe increase the softness of the shadows from the Sun so I'm just going to increase the softness value uh, to maybe four and naturally I'll need to increase the samples uh, to clear some of that grain so what I'm going to do is set that for uh, 16 uh, which is the same value that is defaulted in these uh, portal lights and again remember that it's not going to actually render at 16 samples because I'm using this uh, multiplier this precision multiplier of 2x so uh, that will actually be 32 samples and that should be enough to give a, a fairly smooth uh, shadow around there. So what I'll do to complete this is just go in and again I need to make sure I turn off this material override if you have that on. I'm going to leave the glass hidden uh, and what I'll do is calculate the indirect illumination. Let me turn that back on. I'm going to have it saved to a file uh, and I'll just call this I'll just leave it at that and just make sure that there's nothing in that file already just delete it so it's going to save that final gather calculation to this file and then I'll leave it set to read final gather points from the file and then what I'll do is unhide the glass the reason that I do that is because without the glass here it kinda of lets more light into the scene more indirect illumination and direct illumination uh, for this calculation so the scene will be a little bit brighter which again is just a personal preference uh, if you want to calculate it with a glass then do so and so now I'm ready to calculate this final gather and again I'm going to use this lower resolution uh, for the calculation for my final render once I once I read from that final gather file I'll actually increase the resolution and that's okay to do as long as you don't uh, make this too far of a difference for example I wouldn't want to render out a 600 by 400 uh, final gather calculation and then turn around and lock it and render out a 6000 K uh, or 6000 uh, resolution final image because there just won't be enough data there to hold up but if I render it out at 600 by 400 and then my final resolution will be 800 by 533 then that's not that big of a jump and there'll be uh, plenty of 
of information there. Uh, the benefit to doing that is that uh, it's, it's, it, it's quicker to render or quicker to calculate at a smaller resolution. On the flip side, if you do uh, calculate the final gather at a higher resolution, uh, you can generally use lower, lower uh, settings here because at a higher resolution it automatically calculates more point data. So if you're going to render or calculate your final gather at a higher resolution, use a lower uh, final gather settings. If you're calculating it at a lower resolution, you may need to use a higher uh, final gather setting. But for this particular scene, I'm just going to go right in the middle and use the medium preset. And I'll just go ahead and let this uh, generate the final gather map. Okay, now that it's completed the final gather calculation, I just want to make sure that I'm reading from the final gather maps instead of adding uh, to the existing one. So it's only going to read from this instead of calculating this time. Uh, I want to go in and increase my image resolution, my output. And I want to go and unhide uh, the uh, the glass layer. And now I'm render, uh, ready to render this final scene. And there's the completed scene. Uh, so that's a quick method of setting up Final Gather for rendering out uh, architectural interiors. Uh, up next, I want to look at uh, configuring the scene for use with global illumination and Final Gather. So the method that I just showed where I went and set up the scene using uh, Final Gather only, that's probably the fastest uh, way to set up a scene like this. Uh, but it's not the fastest indirect illumination calculation. Uh, generally speaking, if you use uh, global illumination with Final Gather, uh, it tends to be a faster uh, indirect illumination calculation than just Final Gather by itself. So it's kind of a drawback. Uh, uh, in speed to use Final Gather, uh, you gain speed by not spending as much time setting up the indirect illumination settings, uh, but you lose a little bit of speed uh, when it comes to the calculation time. If you use Final Gather with uh, global illumination, then you have a little more setup time because you just basically have more options to configure. Uh, with the two options here with global illumination and uh, and final gather but it generally calculates a little bit faster uh, the render times are probably about the same uh, global illumination plus final gather may be a little bit faster just because uh, the calculation time seems to be a little bit quicker uh, but uh, overall the times are going to be probably similar the render times actual render times so it's kind of a wash uh, it just really depends on uh, how if you would just want to set up one setting for indirect illumination then just use final gather uh, if you want a little more control uh, and a little bit more uh, speed in the calculations then you may want to use global illumination with final gather so what I'll look at now is just quickly setting the scene up for use with uh, global illumination and final gather so the very first thing that I want to do is I know that these lights are going to be casting photons. They're going to cast uh, global illumination photons. So anytime that you're using photons with uh, this mental ray sun, the first thing that you want to do is enable this photon target and configure that target so that it uh, only encapsula encapsulates the areas that uh, you need photons. So I'm just going to set this up and you'll see as I modify the settings here that this uh, this display changes to show you that photon target and what they're saying is that the photons are going to be uh, generated from the Sun and only within this range so what I want to do is just focus this on uh, these front windows here so I'm just going to move this over kinda of like so so now the photons are only going to uh, enter in through these front windows and and hit this front uh, facade of this structure. Now also all the lights in this scene are going to generate photons so I need to keep that in mind. Uh, if you remember let me just switch to another object here. Uh, if you remember I made these light sources, these uh, portal lights, a little bit larger than the windows and instead of creating a portal light for each pane of glass I just made one large portal light for each window itself. 
uh, what that's going to do when using photons is some of the photons are going to hit this uh, object here and bounce off out into the unknown. Uh, that may be a problem. I doubt I doubt it'll be an issue in this particular scene just because uh, more photons are going to actually enter the room than, than be rejected. But you may want to create these uh, portal lights the size of each window each pane of glass instead of having one large one. Uh, the, the downside to that of course is as I said in the final gather discussion um, that it will take a little bit longer to render the more of these that you have so just you have to play that one by ear as far as the size that you're going to make. For this for this small frame uh, this one large light should be okay even though it's going to reject some of the photons the majority of them will actually make it into the room. Okay, up next, naturally I need to go in and let's just turn off Final Gather for now, but uh, come in and enable Global Illumination if you haven't done so already. Now you have these radius sizes, uh, merge option and things like that. Again, I'm not going to go into all of these settings because I have a separate video uh, that explains these in more detail. I'm just setting this up specific to uh, this particular scene. So to keep this uh, as quick as I can, uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to use this radius, I'm going to let mental ray uh, measure the radius and basically that's measuring the scene extents and coming up with a, a, a value uh, to use for the radius. So most of the times I actually let it calculate that by itself. The only time that you'll want to manually put in a radius is if you see problems with that manual, with that automatic calculation. I'm not going to use the merge nearby photons uh, because I'm not going to fire that many photons into the scene. If you're firing uh, millions of photons in the scene you may want to use this merge option uh, just to save some of the memory. Uh, optimize for Final Gather. I will be using that because I'm going to use Final Gather with with uh, Global Illumination. And the trace depth setting here, uh, think of that kind of as bounces for uh, when we talked about Final Gather we increased the bounces. Uh, this is kind of like the bounces of uh, photons, so I'm going to leave that at the default value of 10. And right now, uh, under the default settings, we're going to generate 20,000 photons per light, an average of 20,000 photons per light. So let me just move back into my camera view here. Now what I like to do whenever working with photons is make sure I have this mental ray uh, message window open. Uh, the reason for that is that you'll get a lot of information in here, and some of it is very useful. I'll show you uh, an example of that here in a second. Let me just go ahead and set this up for a render. I'm going to decrease the render size. Um, let's bump that down to 600. And I'm also going to decrease uh, the sampling, the soft shadows, put it back to the default and decrease the image precision because uh, during the setup I don't need uh, these final render settings. Uh, I, I want it to render as quickly as possible. So let me just give this a test render here. And so once it starts you can see that it's quickly generating this photon emission so it's casting all the photons in the scene right now and as it does so uh, with this information and progress options enabled on this me mental ray message window I can actually get the information as to what is actually going on in the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this render because I, I wanted to point out something here as far as with the photon count. If you scroll up uh, to the top here, you can see uh, the number of photons uh, that the lights are casting. And remember we have it set up for the default value of 20,000 photons uh, per light source here. An average of uh, 20,000 per light. Yet you see the mental ray sun here is generating um, 100,000 photons. The sky portals generate 35,000 photons and my photometric lights are only generating 14 photons. Uh, the reason for that is that that number, that average number, is based on the intensity of the light source. The strongest light in the scene is obviously the sunlight, so it's going to generate a lot more photons uh, than say these dim photometric lights in the scene. So I kind of, it's just a personal preference, I kind of like to even these out to have uh, a little more photons uh, especially for these photometric lights. Um, I'm going to leave the sky portals alone. Uh, the mental ray sun, I'll probably leave that alone, but the photometric lights, I'm going to actually increase the photon contribution. And to do that, I'm just going to select the light and scroll all the way down to the bottom here, and you have this mental ray indirect illumination rollout. 
Uh, I could go in and put manual settings and just specify the number of photons, but when I do that, I also have to specify the color, uh, the energy, and things like that, and I, I don't want to get into that. I want it to be automatic. Uh, so I'm going to leave it in using these global multipliers in automatic mode. However, for GI photons, I'm going to increase that so that I just get more photons, but it maintains the color uh, and energy uh, of those photons automatically. So I'm just going to increase that to, let's say, 250. Uh, it's not saying 250 uh, photons. That's a multiplier. It's a multiplier times the uh, average photon setting here because I'm using this global number here. So it's 250 times, basically, we know it's going to generate 14. So it's 250 times 14. So now if I go in and clear this out and render again, let me just pause this while it renders. And if I go back to the top here, you can see that now instead of 14 uh, photons per photometric light, I'm generating 3,619. So I'll just increase that again. I'm just going to leave it at 500. That should be plenty. Um, clear and close this. And what I want to do is use that uh, material override again that we used in the final gather, just so that I'm not waiting for this to render with all the glossy uh, materials that I have in this scene. And I'll just give this a render so that I can see what my global illumination uh, calculation looks like. And that looks pretty good the way it is. I'm, actually, I don't need to change anything. So I'm just using the default settings here. Um, and I'm getting pretty good results because I have quite a few photons in this scene. Uh, and so now all I need to do is enable this Optimize for Final Gather and come up to my Final Gather and enable that. And one key thing to remember is when you use Final Gather with Global Illumination, this Diffuse Bounces is ignored. So even though it's set to 5, it's only uh, that value is ignored. And it tells you this in the uh, this little tooltip when you scroll up, when you just hover over this option. So another good thing is I don't need to use this high of a setting. Um, I actually could either use Draft probably or even Low. I'm just going to set it on Low because it's just going to smooth out what this is going to do. Uh, Final Gather is basically going to smooth out this solution, this GI solution. So I'm just going to set that on low and I'm actually I'm not going to read from a, a map here because that map's already calculated uh, based on the Final Gather alone pass while ago. So I'm just going to turn that off and just render this as it is and it'll go through and it'll do the global illumination, the photon calculation, and then the GI, uh, the final gather calculation, uh, and then do the final render. And there's the resulting render. Uh, so basically it's up to you to, to determine which method you want to use for scenes like this. Um, if you use global illumination with final gather, just make sure that you use the targeting option on that mental ray sun and that the photons are targeted exactly where you need it and that you have a nice smooth uh, global illumination solution before enabling final gather. Uh, if you're just using final gather, uh, then you can set scenes up quicker probably. Uh, but the calculation time may be a little bit longer. So again, it's up to you to decide which method works best for you.